Hi, my name is Brooke, and I'm a conservator with LP Archaeology, who recently completed excavations at the HS2 site of St. Mary's in Stoke Mandeville. During the last few weeks of the excavation, we found some really exciting finds, a few fragments of statues that we now know to be Roman. These statues were found in the rubble layer of a circular ditch, along with a few other artifacts, such as a large Roman glass vessel and cremation urns. The statues have undergone a preliminary dry cleaning prior to specialist assessment. This process included cleaning with wooden tools and firm brushes to gently remove surface dirt without the use of solvents. Now that dry cleaning is completed, the statues are in the process of being wet cleaned. Before wet cleaning can start, several solvents need to be tested on a small inconspicuous area of the object. The solvent that's chosen is based on several factors, such as how well it cleans the surface dirt and how much working time the conservator has before the solvent evaporates. The object shouldn't be overcleaned, and it may not be stable enough to withstand cleaning with solvents, and these factors are taken into careful consideration during the test cleaning. The female head is halfway through the cleaning process, and you can see the level of cleaning that has been chosen for this particular object. During the cleaning process, more details of the statues have been revealed. On the head of the adult female, for example, we can now see the finer details, such as the tear ducts in her eyes and the fine curve of her lips. One of the most striking reveals has been the level of detail we can see in her hair. Previously, we could only see the rows of braids framing her face, because the back of her head was completely covered in a thick layer of dirt. Now we're able to see the way that her hairstyle was put together. The level of detail that can be seen on the female head in its excellent state of preservation suggests that these statues were housed inside a building rather than being exposed to the elements outside. Another big change can be seen on the sides of the torsos. Instead of arms, we have beautifully carved leafy motifs. These were completely covered in dirt prior to cleaning, and it was a wonderful surprise to see them revealed during the process. The leafy motifs on the sides are not to our knowledge known from other portrait busts, but primarily paralleled on the sides of some altars, including one example from London carved in Cotswold stone, and others from Germany. We've not found any evidence of pigment or inscriptions on any of the statue fragments so far. The statues were carefully examined under microscopy using a handheld digital microscope under both visible and UV light. The statues were found in a rubble layer within a circular ditch, and some smudges of color have been transferred onto the statues from other bits of material in that rubble layer. There are black colors from the charcoal mixed throughout the rubble, and reddish orange and yellow colors were transferred from bits of ceramic building material and mortar found in the circular ditch. After dry cleaning, the busts were assessed by Dr. Penny Coombe, Dr. Kevin Hayward, and Dr. Martin Hennig. The sculptures were looked at in detail, and some preliminary information was offered by the specialists. Their initial assessment is that the busts could be a family group from inside a Roman mausoleum, and are all made of a high-quality Cotswold Bibery-type stone. The carvings could possibly be dated as early as the end of the first century CE, but more parallels for the hairstyles can be found on portraits from the early second century. The only near-contemporary parallel in this stone is the over-life-size head of a woman from Walcott Bath, probably also funerary. Currently, the specialists are compiling and finalizing their assessment, and we look forward to sharing the results of their assessment soon. In addition to the Roman statues, another amazing artifact that was found within the rubble layer of the circular ditch is this large Roman glass vessel. What makes this vessel so unique is that it was found in very large fragments despite its harsh burial environment. These glass fragments were mixed in with large bits of rubble, and the only reason it survived was because a very large piece of stone fell on top and protected it from being crushed by anything else. The glass fragments were found in damp conditions on site, so they were placed into wet packaging after they were excavated. This means keeping them in water so that they don't dry out in an uncontrolled way. Once the glass vessel was brought safely back to the lab, it was cleaned in a conservation-grade detergent and allowed to safely dry in a very controlled way. Once the fragments were dry, it was packaged in acid-free tissue paper and polyethylene boxes until further treatment. 
The preservation and potential deterioration of glass is really based on its manufacture and the raw materials used. This would be the type of raw materials and also the ratio at which these materials were added. Roman glass, such as this glass vessel, tends to be more stable because it has a higher silica content and it uses sodium as a modifier. This glass vessel is very well preserved, but if you look closely, you can see iridescence on its surface. The rainbow colors are caused by a prism effect when the light hits the glass at different angles. This was not an intentional effect created during manufacture, and while iridescence is considered beautiful by modern standards, it can become a concern if not controlled. To prevent further deterioration, this glass vessel needs to be kept in an environment where the relative humidity and temperature are very closely monitored. Based on specialist information, we believe that this is a Roman hexagonal glass bottle that was reused as a cremation urn. Other cremation urns were found in the same circular ditch, but we haven't found any evidence of cremation in this particular glass vessel. Roman glass hexagonal bottles are not uncommon, but what makes this vessel particularly unique is the large fragments that were found. If we look closely at the handle, we can see the fine ribs that were perfectly preserved despite the vessel's harsh burial environments. The base features concentric circles, which are circles with a common center, much like a bullseye. Exact measurements of the base and of the circles were sent to the specialist so they can try to match this vessel up with others made from a similar mold. There's still a lot more work to do on the artifacts found in this rubble layer of the circular ditch, and we are looking forward to giving you more information as we do this.